What's up everybody, Steven C. Killer here. It's time for a new reaction video. But before that, 75% of you guys watching are not subscribed. Now recently, I was able to obtain the silver play button because we hit 100,000 subscribers. Now I'm pushing myself forward even further. We're going for 300,000 subscribers. We can't hit this goal if you're not part of this community. So hit that subscribe button and notification bell. Join the Discord so you don't miss out on any of my videos when I go live on Twitch, live on YouTube, or I upload a video. Links in the description. Don't forget, I do want to upgrade from silver to gold at one point. So help me out today and hit that subscribe button. Now let's get into the video. Let's go. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I don't know why I said let's go. What's up, everybody? Steven Z. Killer. That's an intro fail, but I'm keeping that in. Anyways, Poppy Playtime Chapter 3. We still have no official release date. We know it's around the corner. We know it's going to be dropping soon, and I will be streaming it here on my YouTube channel. But if you guys like me and you guys like my content and you guys want more of my content, please check out my second channel we just hit over 600 subscribers over there and more gaming content coming and some new and higher developed content real soon if you guys are interested in anything that i do please check out my second channel subscribe to it let's get it to a thousand subscribers before the end of the year and also i want to just start pushing more content over there the more you guys support me on my main channel helps me to also thrive and push more content on my secondary channel it's an overwhelming awesome cycle that only can get better with your guys' help hitting that subscribe button and hitting the notification bell on this channel and on the other one but no more talking about that poppy playtime chapter three a, a, a teaser trailer dropped over a month ago and everybody was hyped because it has been over a year it, I, I don't know the official like day to day it, it has been, but it's been well over a year and then some since chapter two of Poppy Playtime. Where the hell has the time gone? But the teaser trailer dropped a while ago, and we also had a sprinkles of these like VHS videos that the makers of Poppy Playtime have released, leading to chapter three as well. So I'm excited. I know you guys are excited. Mad Pat has finally dropped us a video that probably is leading towards the information and the stuff that involved the teaser and maybe much, much more. Let's check out this game theory video. The link will be down below in the description. Show your support by liking and subscribing to the channel like I have. And if you guys enjoy this content and have more ideas, you know what to do. Comment down below and or join the discord and post in the reaction idea section now without any more delay let's get into this video and enjoy it right now by the way i also like how this is kind of representing a little bit of back rooms but also we got sands equals ness or oh, uh i guess purple guy i don't know uh google what's something wait what whatever there's a little bit of Easter eggs right there. I know it's you, Matt, Pat. Hello, Internet. Welcome. Ah, oh, I'm so scared. I had the wrong transition on. Let me turn on the right transition for that. Oh, I'm so scared. Or here. Ah! All right, back to the regular one. <laughs> The game the horrible in 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 uh, in the moment edit right there eerie the show that's full of hot air it's that time again folks mob games has come out of its hibernation and finally given us what we've all been clamoring for for over a year now the long-awaited chapter three second trailer wait are, are you kidding me come on don't get me wrong i love brightening images frame by frame as much as the next guy are we about to brighten something oh are we ever gonna break? He got up? wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa! He got Stupendium on his fuck. Oh yeah, that's right. There was another trailer for Poppy Playtime with Stupendium too, but he got Stupendium to come on for a deep dive. That's awesome. What? Fifteen months since Chapter Two. Fifteen months? 
I know it's been over a year, but goddamn. I feel like I need to get my poppy fixed to complete my indie horror Thanos glove of 2023. That said, if this trailer is anything to go by, the newest chapter is gonna be incredible. Immediately things feel different here, and it's clear they're leaning oh, hard yeah. on the horror. This very clearly reads of like, hey, this is so starkly different from anything else in this franchise. Right. Very clearly reads as, hey, we sold a movie. One of the developers was even asked about this in the official Poppy Playtime Discord server, and he said, quote, it'll still have the same feel as the first two in a lot of respects, but the horror is definitely dialed up, which of course- I am so down for that. Give me more horror. Give me more, I'm gonna shit my pants in this moment of horror. I want more of that. Scare the living shit out of me. Do it, don't be a Bitch. Course got everyone real excited. And from the creepy images of dead kids to the literal writing on the wall, this trailer is like a toy box exploding with clues about what this new chapter is about. And I think that I've figured it all out months before its release. Not only will Damn. we have tortured kids and sinister poppy gas, but we're now being shown more about the monsters they became and the creepy religion they've created. A religion full of sacrifices, rituals, and a leader who's manipulating his congregation into serving him. So Strap on your grab packs and hold your oh. breath, loyal theorists. We're heading deep into the cloudy red fog of play care. The repeated theme... It's getting darker. ...for this chapter is the use of red gas, so let's start there. In a past theory, I suspected that this gas was made from poppies, a red flower that we know Playtime used in their experiments trying to bring dead rats back to life. It's also in the name of the game, so, you know not that big of a logical leap. I also pointed out that poppies have been used throughout history as a sleep agent, mainly due to the natural opium that's contained in the plant. And that is exactly what we see in the trailer. On the walls of the play care, we find a drawing that shows clouds of red gas with the phrase, time for bed, written underneath. This is the last thing that the child sees before falling asleep under the influence of the gas. Which then leads us to the question, who's our new monster responsible for delivering it? We see some crude child drawings on the wall of a purple creature with red clouds around him, and text all all associated with either sleep or nightmares. This then seems to be our gas monster. Sometimes the purple figure is shaped like a bird, other times it's got super long limbs, and sometimes it's just a purple scribble. This has gotten many people on the internet to think that he's a shapeshifter. I disagree. I suspect that this is just the result of sleepy kids not having a clear vision of what this thing actually is as they pass out. Fortunately for us though, we get to that see a bit true. more of this creature. By pausing the trailer on one of the final frames, brightening the image, and then color balancing it a bit, we see that it's got itself a purple paw with four or sharp claws. That, coupled with the shape of the nose and eye sockets that we see during the final jump scare, as well as the presence of a muzzle right here, reads to me like an old cartoon cat. Almost like the Cheshire cat from Allison. I can see that! Okay! Creepy, like cartoon cat too. Wonderland. Now, that at first might seem weird. This franchise already has itself two other cats in the form of Cat B and Candy Cat, so why are they triple dipping? Can't they come up with something new? I suspect well, cats are very easy to probably make for kids kind of situation. Yeah. I that it's because a cat that lures kids to their final sleep is actually a common superstitious belief. One phrase that you sometimes hear tossed around is that cats will steal a baby's breath. For centuries, there have been these urban legends circulated about cats sneaking into cradles at night, causing children to suffocate and die. It's unclear where that whole urban legend started. Pro I've never fucking heard that. Probably the story of just one parent and where it happened to them, but it's thought that the smell of the milk on baby's breath, or the crib being a nice warm place to cuddle, or the cat being jealous, some combination. Uh, thank you for subscribing. But it also could just be like a warm spot to sleep and it just happened the, the cat was sleeping on the, the child's face and with it being a baby, not able to move the cat and or the cat was too knocked out kind of situation and the the baby suffocated because of the cat's size blocking its airway. Now those things get them to climb into bed, lay across the baby, and deprive them of oxygen. There was even a coroner back in 1791 that came to examine a deceased child and actually stated this urban legend was indeed the cause of death, which only gave more support to the superstition. And that, I suspect, is what our Chapter 3 cat monster is doing. After a fun day at the game station under the watchful eye of Mommy Longlegs, this guy would come in to quote-unquote help the children fall asleep, stealing the breath of children by replacing their air with his poppy sleeping gas. Considering that we've been seeing more and more images of gas masks, this is also something that we're likely going to have to use to protect ourselves. Otherwise, we might begin to hallucinate and have to distinguish between what's real and what isn't, just like the kids' drawings on the wall would suggest. So what is this gas cat? Or, I suppose if you're following the conventions of the naming system for this game, it would be Gassy Caddy. Not the most sinister of names. 
<laughs> but what is Gassy Caddy up to now? Well, the writing is quite literally on the wall in this trailer. It's been busy carving phrases like, I live to serve our angel of salvation. I rejoice in him. Wrapped us in garlands on the walls. Garlands. Oh god, it is a cultist cat. By the way, are wreaths of flowers that are often used for Catholic baptisms. So you might start to see where all this is going. So are these stage lights? Oh, they look like candles to me. Are they oh yeah. Like candles. ritual candles. Oh, yeah, a lot of religious imagery here. Yes, he That's so awesome, Stupendium is uh uh, was able to go over and work with Matt Pet for a good bit. Daddy is no longer taking on the role. You know, I wonder with the new chapter if Stupendium's working on a new song for chapter three, because I remember the uh, the Poppy Playtime song. I, I believe that was one of his. That, that was the first song I think I ever listened to by him, and it's still like one of his most popular ones. Role of a monster, but instead that of a religious leader. This idea is also exemplified by another carving that we see on the wall, my somniferous flock. This isn't referring to a group of birds, it's being used in the Christian sense. One of the many roles that Jesus is associated with in Christianity is that of a shepherd, one who tends to, feeds, and cares for his flock. The sheep in this scenario are his followers, people that rely on and follow Jesus in their day-to-day -day lives. Meanwhile, the word somniferous stands out for a few reasons. Mainly because I've never heard anyone ever use that word in a sentence before. Turns yeah. out that in the years since this factory closed, Gassy's been studying up for his SATs. Always be learning there, Gassy Caddy. Because let me tell you, I am right there with you. I, too, am a nerd for words. Somniferous would be, what, my sleepy? Yeah. Because somnia is sleep. Turns out I was actually half right in my assessment there. According to Google, it's not just being sleepy, but having sleep induced upon you. So our gassy caddy is oh. talking about his flock of sleepy kids, the orphans in the play care that he's putting to sleep. But the play care has been abandoned for years. There aren't kids there anymore that can serve as his sleepy flock, right? Wrong. The whole point of the play care and the poppy gas was to help convert them into toys. But rather than them all being giant toys like Huggy Wuggy, I suspect a lot of these kids turned out much smaller. When the team and I were playing through Project Playtime's newest update, we noticed this poster. What does this say? Take every every step. Take every step like yep. it's your last. <laughs> oh, and they're heading to play care. Yeah, and it's a bunch uh, of random characters, so these are kids, not like toys. A poster with three new plush toys walking towards the play care. Now, at the time, I just thought that these toys were there to represent the children walking to the play care, trying to make things seem wholesome and child friendly. But now, I don't think that these were representations at all. I've already mentioned the sad looking images of the children on the walls of the play care, but did you notice the remains of characters next to their faces on the edges of the frame? Yes, these I did are know the that. The same characters. The dog. Oh. Oh. Unicorn. There's also a new character there that wasn't on the poster, a green bunny. And if you I noticed the characters, but I did not know they were part of the poster. That's cool. Look at a later drawing from one of the children in the trailer. We see a plush with floppy green ears and the words, my new friend. This kid became his friendly green bunny. And I suspect that the other children all had similar fates, becoming the very mascots of play care. This is the sleepy flock that Gassy is talking about. A group of converted children that are lost and scared and see him as their only savior. But then who is this angel of salvation that Gassy Caddy's talking about? Here. Well, the last two wall scratchings give us that answer pretty explicitly. The original saved me, I rejoice in him, and never forget the hour of joy. In our last theory, we suspected the hour of joy was the moment that the toys revolted and reclaimed the factory. In one of the analog horror tapes released on the Mob Games YouTube channel, we see the hour of joy is at hand written on one of the walls right before we hear screams of the factory workers. Screams that match the ones we hear on the scientist's VHS tape from chapter one. Though still missing, today's events are no doubt in relation to him. His absence was a flaw in the scientific process. It's the prototype, 1006, the one we believe was created from the man who wanted to bring joy to children, Elliot Ludwig. He was the first successful toy from the Bigger Bodies Initiative. He was the original that led to the creation of all the others. And we actually get our very first look at him in these trailers. This massive robotic amalgamation made from various oh, other toy wow. parts. He got things like a huggy head near the top, and there, right there, there's uh, Mommy's top half. What have you done? This is what the prototype's working on. This is what oh, mommy meant by fuck. make me a part of him. And my suspicion is that this is what Gassy and his somniferous flock are helping to build. Any cult needs themselves a goal, something that helps the leader to become more powerful. And gathering parts of dead toys, maybe even killing other toys themselves in order to build a monstrous body? Yeah, that one seems to fit. God damn, another game dealing with dark cultist bullshit the bill and if any of them die along the way well then they're just martyrs for the cause in the opening shot of huggy's headless body there's that you're with us but you die we put you part of it you with us, with you're not with us and you die well guess what you're going to be part of it now that you're dead and we're going to force you to die too
That's pretty much what they're doing. Actually, a dog plushie similar to the dog that we've seen in the posters, also missing a head. If you die or fall victim in your mission, you don't die in vain, you get the privilege of becoming part of the savior. But did you notice something missing in this 1006 amalgamation? His spindly arm and long thin fingers that we see from the end of chapter 2. That critical missing piece in this silhouette makes me think that this isn't his body, or at least I don't think it's his body It's his yet. body to notice be. Notice how still the silhouette is. Well, that could certainly be there for dramatic effect, I actually think it's because this body is a work in progress. The candles around the play care give off a ritualistic vibe, and that, combined with the missing iconic arm, makes me think that maybe 1006, Gassy, and his flock are gathering these materials to build him the perfect body, and that they still need to put his soul into that body. And so chapter 3 is going to be about us stopping it, stopping the somniferous flock from finishing the job, so that maybe, finally, we can... People are theorizing that chapter 3 is the last chapter. If this is taking place... Now... For how long this chapter is taking to develop, I'm going to say this right now. This chapter, I don't care what the price is as long as it's reasonable, but this chapter, if this is the final chapter, now there's no guarantee, everyone's theorizing this. If this is the final chapter, this has to be no less than seven hours. I don't think you can do everything that you need to do to make it a good wrap-up story if it's under six to seven hours it's it would be way too short be a hero in this game maybe but i don't think so you see thus far we've been nothing but the villain it's been well established at this point that we used to work here and not only did we work here we were instrumental in the creation of some of these toys you wonder who we are but why you should know it was your doing that made us... Oh, we said that! They left Mommy to die alone. Mommy didn't deserve that. But you, you worked here. So if anyone deserves to die alone, it's you. And now, look at what we've done since coming back to the factory. We've killed both Huggy Wuggy and Mommy Longlegs. Two toys that... Uh, we're, we're still not 100% on Huggy being dead. That were made from kids it's not a great track record for our player character right currently there's a poppy ARG taking place in the lead up to chapter three and while there isn't enough information yet to well i guess pa uh if if huggy did die that would explain the because there was found like huggy hair being like on the wall of some one of the stages in part two i guess that could be them just dragging like like how they dragged mommy long legs body away they could have dragged Huggy's body away and it just, uh, because there is a Huggy head attached to the, uh, colossal thing. Fully solve it, there are aspects that have been discovered that shine a light on the children involved in the play care scheme. One of the discoveries was this incident report about one of the orphans in play care, Marie Payne. Now, if the name Marie Payne sounds familiar, well, it's because we found a transfer request in Chapter 2 about her. In that request, we were told that she was the child that would go on to become Mommy Longlegs. Now, why do I bring that up? Well, if you remember, Mommy was fine with the orphans because she never wanted them to feel alone like she did. She was protective of the kids. No, the only people people that Mommy Longlegs lashed out at were the staff, the people who tortured her and transformed her into a giant neon pink toy. She knew what they were going to be doing to these kids because it had all been done to her first. She was trying to be a protector, a comfort. We also know that she doesn't trust the prototype or any of his religious rhetoric. What have you done? You make me part of him! This is especially important if the prototype is indeed... Whenever part uh, three drops, though, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to replay all of part one and two into part three when I do stream this. Elliot Ludwig, founder of Playtime, the man who started the whole toy conversion process in the first place. She doesn't buy his liberation of toy shtick one bit. She knows that he's once again trying to use the people around him for his own selfish gains. In fact, a group of toys building a big body using the parts of other living creatures, it's the bigger bodies initiative all over again, but this time for the mm -hmm. prototype. All of these clues together make me- Yeah, neither, neither uh, the person you're playing as and of course, Elliot is not a good guy. No. 
Honestly, now thinking about it, Mommy Longlegs was the good guy in this. Curious about what our motivations are for being here. Are we actually here to help? Or are we just cleaning up the mess of evidence that we left behind? Are we on the side of the orphans, unwillingly turned into monsters? Or are we going to end up siding with Elliot all over again? A man who created a nightmare for so many. Early signs aren't exactly promising. We stripped Mommy of her freedom and independence only to feed her to the prototype. So what do you think is going to happen next with these kids from Playcare? Seems like there's no route where we don't walk away with with some blood on our hands. Though, some tells me that's something our player character is more than familiar with. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. If you I agree with all of the statements in this and I'm looking forward to more and I can't wait for more development. Uh whenever another trailer or release date or anything that involves chapter 3 Poppy Playtime is announced, uh, please let me know about it as soon as you possibly can. Uh, let me know on either Discord or uh, in the comments of my videos. And uh, I will be streaming this as soon as I possibly can. I'm looking forward to this. Can't wait for more. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. Stay tuned for more. I upload daily. And until next time, hit that subscribe button. And later. Anytime.